So it's that time of year again when the sun drops lower in the sky and mass solar generation drops off a cliff. And with the way that the weather has changed in the middle of September, I'm hoping that the decision to switch to Intelligent Octopus was well timed. In this video I will discuss the step by step process for switching to Intelligent Octopus. I'll be talking about a couple of small teething issues that I had and also discussing the tariff in more detail. So if you're interested in switching, stay tuned. Hi everyone, I'm Danny V Solar. If you find this video useful, please consider giving it a like and also subscribing to my channel where you can follow my journey for all things electric vehicles, renewables, energy tariffs, solar panels and much more. So a couple of people have asked in my previous videos a lot of questions relating to Intelligent Octopus. So I thought I'd take the time to explain the tariff in a bit more detail, explaining why I switched when I did and also explaining the switching process in much more detail. I'll start with the tariff itself. This is a very clever tariff from Octopus Energy that aims to balance the grid demand by offering EV charging slots when grid usage much lower during the night. As a minimum, each night they offer 6 hours of cheap off-peak electricity between 11.30pm and 5.30am at a cost of 7.5 pence per kilowatt hour. I say as a minimum because on certain days if grid demand was lower outside of or in addition to these 6 hours then they will also offer you cheap additional slots at the same cheap rate. Also if you get a slot outside of the 6 hours the cheaper rate does not just apply to your EV charging but also your house usage is cheaper as well which is great and this also allows the tariff to make the most of the greener energy and allocate it when and where it's needed. Outside of the cheap rate, the tariff charges a day rate of around 30 pence per kilowatt hour as of September 2023. Although this may vary depending on your region and could change when the energy charges are reviewed at the end of each quarter. So this essentially allows Octopus quite a lot of control over when to charge a car, but the trade-off of that is the cheaper price for the customer. So personally, I'm quite happy to give up that control. And as you can state, when you need to use the car buy in the app, then it's a win for Octopus and a win for the customer as well. Octopus reckon that an average driver covering 10,000 miles per year in an electric vehicle will save around £800 when compared with charging via the standard flexible tariff. Let me know in the comments if you're already switched to Intelligent Octopus and how you're finding it. And also if you're considering switching as well, hopefully this video is useful and let me know in the comments. So to be eligible for this tariff, you'll obviously need an electric vehicle. And then alongside that, it's important that you either have a compatible electric vehicle with Octopus or a compatible electric vehicle charger. So you don't have to have both that are compatible, it's just one or the other. And you can find a list on the Octopus website. There is already a big list of compatible chargers and cars and growing all the time. For my setup, I have a Tesla Model 3 and a Zappi charger. The Zappi is not yet compatible with Octopus, however the Tesla is. So when I switched on the 18th of September 2023, I was able to connect the Tesla through the app and configure the tariff using the Tesla. You would also need a working smart meter to be on this tariff and also either a smartphone or a tablet so you can access the Octopus app and see the charging times. A couple of people have asked in the comments how this works if you have more than one electric vehicle to charge. If this is the case you need to configure one vehicle to work on the tariff and then the second vehicle as long as you charge that between 11.30pm and 5.30am then you still get the cheaper rate and that's generally enough time to fully charge the car. So let's take a look at the switch itself and how easy it was to move. As I mentioned in my previous videos, I was previously on Octopus Flux and this was very beneficial throughout spring and summer due to the high export rates at peak times. But as my solar generation started to drop off in September, it was always my plan to switch to Intelligent Octopus. I usually use Twitter or X as it's now called to message Octopus directly. The staff on there seem to be very knowledgeable from Octopus and every query I've had has been resolved very quickly. When I sent them the message stating that I wanted to switch to Intelligent Octopus, they sent me some very detailed instructions to switch using the app. I then went through the process which you can now see on screen. So I had to go into the app and there's an option for Intelligent EVs um, and you can click on that. You can then select the electric vehicle or charger that you wish to use. It then gives you some hints and tips for using the tariff and tells you around about the six hours charge. The fact it's using greener electricity because it's coming at the cheapest times when energy is abundant. You can plug it in, set up and chill. 
and then you can also track the charge using the app as well. There's the option to bump charge from the app as well if you need your car quicker. And it then gives you the list of electric vehicles which are supported. So I scroll down. And it gives you some instructions on how to run the test charge. And then you just need to press get started. And add your car and your charger. So I selected my Model 3 performance. And then configured the Zappy charger, which as I mentioned, isn't compatible to be used on the tariff, but you still need to select that to let Octopus know which, tar which charger you're using. It then asks you to sign into your cars account. And then once I did that, I picked up the cars model and VIN number. Now we have to make sure at this point that all other charges, so I had a scheduled charge set on my Zappi for the hours of the Octopus Flux off peak, which was between 2 and 5 a.m. So you have to make sure that those are switched off so they don't interfere with the charging from Octopus. And also if you've got any time charges on your car as well, these need to be switched off. Octopus then checked the connection. It said this can take up to 10 minutes. I don't think it took quite that long, but it was a couple of minutes to get this set up. While I watched Constantine swim around on the screen for a while. I then set the charge limit higher than what it was currently on the vehicle. And it was all set up. And you then get to set the charge limit that you want and also you can say when you need the car to be ready by. And there's also the option to do the bump charge on there as well. And then straight away that gave me the smart charging plan which was created in around about 20-30 seconds. Um, and for that night I got the plan between basically 12 and 5 which is just within the standard hours anyway as I mentioned sometimes you may get longer than these hours depending on when the grid has an excess of energy and it then did a quick charge just to test that connection and that was about it so this was all very straightforward and worked very, very well. And uh, when I woke up in the morning, the car was charged to 75% as I'd requested and was ready to go. I did have a couple of small teething issues after this. One of which was the fact that I was currently on Octopus Flux um, and it actually meant that I needed to be switched off the Flux export tariff onto the SEG tariff first before I could make the switch to Intelligent. So this meant that the switch to Intelligent didn't actually complete um, so it was important that I spoke to Octopus via X and then they updated the outgoing export tariff and then it was free to connect to the Intelligent one, okay. So a little tip for you there, if you are moving from Flux to Intelligent, be sure to get the customer advisor to switch you away from the Flux export tariff before you try and connect to the Intelligent Octopus tariff. Thankfully, because Octopus had my DNO and MCS paperwork already, I didn't have to send that in again and they just wanted confirmation that I'd um, done what I needed to do with signing up to the Intelligent Tariff and wanted a picture of a fluffy friend to uh, prove that I'd done what I needed to do. Unfortunately, I didn't have one of those. I've only got a fish, uh, so I didn't bother sending them that. The other thing I noticed while going through this change was the fact that Octopus had switched me away from the Gas Tracker Tariff as well. So I'd signed up to this last year and this was really good it saved me a lot of money because the price of gas wholesale gas was much cheaper than the standard flexible rate i had sent octopus confirmation that i wanted to stay on this tariff and it obviously just got missed so i'd sent them the email with the confirmation on and they quickly re-established my connection to the gas tracker tariff and then also refunded the difference for the couple of weeks that i was not on that tariff which was great so that's me all set up on intelligent octopus for the winter 
My plan would be to switch back to Flux around about March, April time next year when the solar generation starts to pick up again. I'm still trying to figure out the best way to automate everything as much as I can on the tariff, but currently what I'm doing is charging my battery between the hours of 11.30 and 5.30 in the morning to full. And then that means that any export that the solar produces during the day goes straight back to the grid. So essentially charging the battery at 7.5 pence per kilowatt hour and then exporting any excess solar during the day at 15 pence per kilowatt hour, which is working well so far. It's also so cheap to charge a car on this tariff. 7.5 pence per kilowatt hour versus 17.5 pence per kilowatt hour on flux. So less than half price. And if I was charging the Tesla from completely empty to completely full on this tariff, it would cost me around about £5.62. So way cheaper than my old BMW diesel that I used to have. And with the way oil prices are at the moment, the saving should only go one way if it remains the same. If you have an EV and would like to join Intelligent Octopus, or even if you don't and would like to join any of Octopus's other tariffs, it would be great if you could use my referral code to sign up to them which is on screen now and also listed in the description as well. If you use this, you get £50 added to your account when you join and I also get £50 as well. Anyway, that's it for this video. Hopefully that enrolment process was useful for you and helps if you are unsure about switching. If you're not already, please consider subscribing to my channel for more similar content like this. I've got quite a backlog of videos now, so feel free to check those out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.